Well, hello everyone. It is me, Chris, the Thrift Shop Hustler. Yes, do not adjust your television sets. It is me. It is I going to do another What Sold on eBay video on behalf of the American Cancer Society. I am Chris, the Thrift Shop Hustler. Yes, it's been a while, folks, and I've kind of had a kind of got bored with the crypto world with everything that's going on now. So I have some free time to make some more YouTube videos, and I'm super actually excited to kind of get back into the YouTube channel. We got 17,000 subscribers. It's kind of funny to think about all the years of trying to uh, build this channel up and just to kind of let it sit and do nothing. So we're back at it. Lots of great stuff going on. I'm doing, I'm doing great. You know, I know the half the world's falling apart on us. And so, uh, you know, just everyone try to hold on in there. So anyways, we're going to go over the top 10 things that were sold. I do believe in April of 2022. Yes, that's how long this has been. We're not going to talk about jewelry or anything like that, uh, as that's kind of, I, I feel like low hanging fruit in terms of price value. Uh, if you know about jewelry and all that kind of stuff, so, you know, some of the things are expensive. We can do literally these top 10 videos on just jewelry alone. Uh, the amount of jewelry, uh, we get in, but it, ironically, it's funny. The first piece right here is a piece of jewelry, but I wanted to kind of touch a base on this. And if you're new to the channel, definitely go down there and click the subscribe button. These videos are created to help and educate those that are new and old and young and veterans and novices for the different things that are out there in garage sales and estate sales and blah, blah, blah. I think I've kind of rattled on almost two minutes here for nothing. So let's get right into it. I know most people don't care about <laughs> me, the person, they just want the information. So let's get right into it. Let's do this. I got to click the button here. <laughs> Anyways, uh, today we got this vintage Sajin butterfly agate quartz, all the kind of, uh, that's what the thing looks like. Uh, the main reason why I'm kind of showing this right now, and this did sell for, I think, I believe 250 bucks. This is a kind of like a very unique piece and it, it, it really stuck out to me. So I wanted to kind of just, you know, to explain to the newer eBay people that, you know, if you see some stuff that kind of looks very unique, definitely take a second look, especially jewelry uh, that says 925. Of course, that's sterling silver mark and Sajin is basically what in the jewelry world they would call it, you know, signed, you know, it's not physically signed with a pen, but it's uh, stamped usually with an artist name. So Sajin, if you look some of this stuff up, some of this stuff up actually goes for a pretty good amount of money. Uh, but the main reason I wanted to show you this is just, you know, if you see unique kind of jewelry items at a garage sale or estate sale, flip it over, see if it says 14K, you know, there's even like European marks, like I think 800. If you see that, it's kind of like a, you know, 80% silver. There's a lot of jewelry marks. So if you're, if you're new to the kind of jewelry kind of thing, definitely go and do some research. There's tons of videos out there to kind of look at this. But the main reason I want to show this is just to show you that, you know, if you see something unique at a state sale, take another look at it. So here we're going to get into the top 10 things sold. Number 10, this vintage Excalibur flour mill, electronic grain grinder, all those, all those grain grinding for all your grain grinding needs. That's kind of like a tongue twister right there. Um, this kind of stuff is is really, really kind of becoming into vogue again. And what I mean by that is, you know, the kind of world we're in right now, there's a lot of stuff like um, supply shortages. People like, you know, they want to kind of take some raw grain and, and, and kind of grind it down and, and make whatever they're going to make with it because they can't get certain supplies. This would be perfect for someone who's into baking or someone who kind of wants to live a little bit off the grid. And I'm, I'm assuming, you know, these are pretty hard to find. I've never really did any research on grain grinders, but in my mind with everything that's going on in the world, you know, people are kind of getting these kind of things because at some point, let's just say, you know, knock on wood, something was to catastrophically happen to our world, you know, people are going to need to be able to grind grain and they're not going to want to sit there and pound on rocks like uh, back in the Stone Age, but people will do what they're going to do. But this will save uh, someone a lot of time. So in my mind, I'm thinking this is more of a prepper kind of purchase than a uh, like a collector, like, oh, I would love to have an electronic grain grinder in my collection. No, I think this is literally going to be used for uh, creating all kinds of food things and stuff like that. So really, really cool item. Keep a look, look out for this and uh, different things like this, because I think in the next few years, these are these kind of things are really going to start to be uh, hard to find and, and pricey. Uh, next up, we have this Canon PowerShot 
SX 720. I kind of got a, I kind of lost my brain right there in a second. Uh, this is a 20.3 megapixels. So when you see the MP, that's what that means, megapixels. And uh, just for you to know, like the more megapixels in a camera, usually the the better it is for the digital side. So if like, you know, it's basically the higher the number, the usually the more pricey it's going to be. You know, a lot of the ones you'll find at garage sales for like five bucks are like you know twelve megapixels, eight megapixels, and stuff like this. This one actually happens to come with like a lot of pretty cool um, little accessories, as you as you would say and the different kind of tripods and the different adapters for the power and stuff like this. So just, you know, th this kind of stuff is very, 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 very common. And in a garage sales and estate sales is, is people like just, they don't, you know, they think of like their, you know, their, their more expensive cameras, point and shoot cameras, not these little, uh, little ones. And usually they get passed up and a lot of people don't even look them up to see if they're valuable or not. A lot of people pass them because the majority of these are worth like 10 to $20 that you find, you know, going around. So anyways, always look these up if you can. Um, this was a great uh, kind of bundle here and this sold for $299. Uh, next up, we have this Fitz and Floyd Clausane. Ooh, I used to I used to not be able to pronounce that word. I was like Clausane, oh Clausane, uh, but it's I think it's Clausane, and I actually looked it up because it, because uh, Clausane is kind of like an enamel feel, kind of it's liquid, it's like paint, it's liquid, and it's kind of dripped into like these little metal crevices, and it hardens just like how like Disney uh, pins are made. And I always got to say like pins because like there's pens like p-e-n-s and then there's pins p-i-n-s and a lot of people that are in my life get confused because i always say pens even if it's pins i say pens so whatever anyways closet a this is fitz and floyd god i've already went off on a little rant on something stupid like this that's what you guys tune in for is the is the dumb rants that I go through with just my brain is like a goldfish. It goes swimming to the side there. Uh, anyways, Fitz and Floyd, definitely look at this brand up. They have all different kinds of uh, different kind of home decor and kind of fun little things, uh, the Christmassy things. And so when you see that brand, let me see if they actually have the logo here. I don't think they do. Uh, Fitz and Floyd, as you can see there, always, always look those up. And if the price is right, pick them up because some of them are worth some pretty crazy money. Uh, this one happens to be, you know, a set, a six piece play setting. And there was a, a setting for eight. So they decided to break these up, which was pretty smart. And so they sold for $99 each with free local pickup so they wouldn't get damaged in shipping. I love it. I love it. Uh, next up, we have this Christian Louis Vuitton. <laughs> and it's funny because Christian Louis Vuittons, when I first started uh, dealing with women's clothes and shoes, and I've learned a lot over the last four years. Oh my god, um, the what I I used to think these were like Louis Vuittons, like you know, like the the handbags, but it's like Christian Lou Lou Vuitton, and they're they're most famously known for their red bottoms, and and these shoes are actually very commonly reproduced or. Uh, what should I say? There's a lot of fakes out there. That's I just put it that way. There's there's a lot of fakes out there, and uh, Christian Lou Baton has a has a staff of people that just go through eBay looking for for fakes, and they and they re will report you. Uh, it's happened to us a couple times, especially when I was very new to this whole thing and not really realizing like what because a lot of these fakes they look especially like the the handbags now the the, the quality is so so good it's like some of the fakes are even hard to kind of spot these days so but anyways i've, I've kind of ranted again but anyways look for the red bottom shoes louis baton these ones actually have some pretty uh gnarly wear to them i think the you know the uppers look pretty decent as you can see there's some scuffing and stuff but these shoes are pretty expensive brand new anyways uh these sold for four hundred dollars huge shout out to jake in san jose for this wonderful sale uh, next up, we have this award-winning artist, Joseph Calderon, Prison San Quentin piece. As we can see here, this is what it looks like. Now, I'm not quite sure if this particular person was uh, an artist that was actually in jail, printing or making these from in jail, or if it was just an artist that visited and was able to do these sketches. And um, uh, very surprising. I I've never heard of this artist before, but very surprising. This sold for $450. These are things you can find sometimes 
at um, Goodwill's. Well, I would say like you know, not as much as anymore because I'm I'm thinking like you know five, six, seven, eight, ten years ago, you you would be able to find really good pieces of art at Goodwill because they didn't really have their whole processes. I would say locked down but now you know they they put a lot of their art and stuff online and they're they've kind of wised up to everything that's going on in terms of uh art and things like that and 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 one of the things that you could still kind of find at goodwills that is they usually miss is glass so glass is like the last i mean people find things at goodwill all the time but what i'm saying is you know the things that are home runs that they miss was usually art and glass and, and they've kind of lock down the art thing pretty well but the you can still pretty pretty much i got a a sidetracked again we should have a uh, (laughs) sidetrack a a, a counter up here that i'm just like oh he got sidetracked again ding (laughs) anyways it sold for 450 bucks and is uh was shipped and all that kind of stuff so anyways the the main thing is just whenever you see art look up the artist it looks like this one was was created in 1960. Don't take everything what you see on these things also as like gospel. Do your research, and uh, you know you can check these different things out when you're out and about. And uh, speaking of art, we have a I, f- I forget how you spell how you pronounce uh, this. Is it Kleb Kalab Kalib Kalib? Let's just say it's Kalib. It's Kalib Nilon original canvas. A graffiti artist. Uh, this artist is actually m- known for like being like uh, doing like street art and stuff like this. And there's a huge piece. And you know these are the th- kind of the things that sometimes you they come in and you're just like, what the hell is this? And and you look up the artist and you're like, oh, because like to be honest, um, and sadly, I would say that art is mostly the name, and you know a little bit of percentage is like the quality. So like you know. Well, known artists, you know, they don't, they might not be the most talented people on earth, but if they have a, a, a name and the collectors are there, you know, that's where it's at. So you can have a good eye for what quality of art is, but if no one cares, no one cares. It's pretty sad. As a matter of fact, I've picked up over the years some really nice pieces in my office that you've seen in the backgrounds um, over the years because they were cheap and like they're artists that like no one knows or no one cares about. So you get, you know, I'm buying for the quality, not because of the artist name. And I find like, you know, if you do some of that stuff at garage sales and stuff, sometimes, you know, you hit a home run, uh, every once in a while, because there's some artists that people just don't know about. And then, you know, whatever. Anyways, this was a local pickup, a really good sale. And I'm glad that Josette in Santa Carita was able to, uh, get this out of her office. <laughs> Uh, too much, too much. Anyways, we have this uh, Jaguar La Couture Atmos Clock Perpetual Motion Clock thing, vintage. Now I was trying to actually look this up, and I couldn't quite figure out like what what the maker was. Not the maker, the origin of Swiss. Okay, I guess I didn't look hard enough. Anyways, uh. You'll come across these clocks mostly out of estate sales, sometimes garage sales, but pretty much like this is like an estate sale kind of thing. So if you ever see these clocks, there's actually like kind of one really thing to, for the most part, let's just put it out there. For the most part, these things don't work. They're old. You know, they need servicing. Um, these things are built like tanks, you know, it just, maybe they just need a couple of like, you know, things greased and and cranked up and wound up and then they're good to go. But you're going to find these, a lot of these things aren't going to be working. One of the major things to, to look for is the country of origin, Swiss, German, and Japan. You really want to look for German. German, in my opinion, and this is my opinion, I can probably argue with clock people all day long about this. Some people think the Swiss make the best watches. I believe the Germans make the best vintage clocks like this. So if you see Germany on this, um, any of these things, and they're like 10 bucks, 5 bucks, just buy it. Don't even like think twice about it, especially if the price is right. The vintage German stuff is, 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 is very... 
uh, it's 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 high quality. It's like really good clock, even if it's not worth a ton. I mean, it's a nice piece to have, and it's a good clock. Uh, if you see something that says West Germany, obviously, if you know your history, that's after World War II, 1945. So you can kind of date kind of things by that also. If it says Germany, most for the most part, it's going to be before uh, World War II. Um, you know, and then when the Berlin Wall came down, and I think it was 1990, I could be wrong. History, what's crazy is history ties into a lot of reselling and stuff. So if you know some history, you can kind of... Uh, Relate and date. Relate and you can relate and you can relate and date. I like that. <laughs> TM trademark. I'm trademarking that. Relate and date. Anyways, these kind of brass clocks. Like, just take a second look at them. And like I said, Germany, Swiss, and Japan. If it says made in China, just just buy it and throw it away. Save or recycle it. We should. Yeah, this is 2022. You should recycle everything you can. <laughs> Anyways. We are here for the top three now. This is a vintage Ansley Bailey Bone China. This actually sold for 750 bucks. Crazy. As we can see here, Bone China. And for those that don't know, you've heard the term Bone China. And I, th I would say most resellers know what Bone China is. Basically, they grind up pieces of bones. And I want to say it's bovine, like pig or... Um, uh, cow bones. I could be wrong. I, I mean, I have done research on this stuff. Bone China is basically, they, they grind up bits of bone. They put it in with the porcelain. And what it actually does is there is like on the molecular side of things, it, it strengthen, strengthens, I can say that, strengthens the porcelain so that it's less likely to break. So bone China is like a, is like a higher quality of uh, just regular China and not to be like, you know, confused with the country China, though maybe there's a tie in there. I don't, I don't, I don't care. <laughs> Anyways, Bone China, England, Ansley, all this stuff is so easy to look up if you're out of state sale or garage sale. I know sometimes it's like, oh, uh, you know, it's the madness and I got to grab it and buy it, you know, but always look out for England, always look out for Bone China. If you see two things that say England and Bone China and they're like a dollar, they're probably worth picking up. Some of them are worth hundreds of dollars. Not all of them. Uh, this is a special case, and I'm I'm assuming it's the pattern. And uh, a beautiful, beautiful pattern, probably hand painted, as we can see here. So definitely keep an eye out for that. Uh, next up, we're still selling some Alex Trebek suits, and a huge shout out to Stephen, who donated. Uh, I want to say 21 of these, 22 of these. And uh, half of them have sold. We still have a few left. So if you want to have own a piece of television history, we do have some of Alex Trebek's last suits that he ever wore. And I will take a best offer on those. And um, this one particularly sold for uh, $800. So you can definitely look that up for sure. Uh, next up, for the last, the last actually thing, we have a Chanel jacket, lambskin field pocket uh, this sold for eight hundred and seventy five dollars so definitely look out for chanel and chanel is usually you know they do have some fake jackets but a, a chanel jacket is usually gonna have you know really high quality and you can be able to tell it uh, apart from anything so anyways i'm chris thirst shop hustler hope you enjoyed this video definitely go down there subscribe i'm back i'm back i'm back and we'll see you next time take care i gotta push the button